Good morning, guys and girls. Um, sunshine's out today and warmed up. I think we're about 50 degrees, so I thought I would uncover the um, molding bench for casting and see if I can't get, get it cleared off and maybe get my sand tempered so it's ready to start casting. I've about got the fifth bearing pattern done and I've got a couple other patterns that I've been working on, new patterns that I want to kind of prototype with and find out how they're going to cast. So um, fairly nice out so I thought we'd uh, just do a quick little video. We'll uh, uncover the bench. I'll kind of go through it a little bit with you and show you what I've got for a foundry setup or at least the molding part of it and um, see if we can get some stuff ready to cast. So, Anyway, these are, uh, I guess the, the overview is this is undercover, but it's kind of outside. So everything's just stacked on it, been here for the winter. So these are original flasks that I built uh, years and years ago. I've had these for several years. They work fairly well. I've kind of gotten away from them, um, but I've got a few of them floating around. So they're, they're here. And for the last few years, I've gone to uh, Steve Chastain style snap flasks for an awful lot of things. I've uh, I've got several of them in several different sizes. I'm not sure how well I'm going to use them I've, or how much of them I'm going to use and, and what I'm going to change. Um, I've cast my hardware for these. They're they're pretty much to his design. He, he's put out a series of books on foundry work. So uh, really good reference, all of his books. And I'll see if I can't... Uh, put a link down below for those. But anyway, these are snap flasks. And I've got a couple of bigger ones. This one actually needs hardware on it yet. These are make a really nice flask. They're a heavy duty flask for a snap flask. They work well. Like I say, I don't know how much I'm going to use with them and, and what I'm going to go. I'm going to go to something a little bit lighter. I do quite a few castings anymore on um, with um, on match plates. So, and I don't have any match plates out here that go with them, but basically the way a match plate works, if you're not familiar with it, is you'll ram up your pattern in the cope and the drag, just like you normally would. These are all cast hardware for these, uh, cast machine. And your, uh, you'd ram up your, your mold just like you normally would. When you're done, why you set it in position where you want to pour them, you pop the edges and pull your flask right off. So then you can, you don't have to have as many flasks, you can uh, make as many molds as you want or until you run out of sand, and uh, then you can pour. Most of my flasks are the snap flasks. There's a degassing reel. Another early flask for some Atlas hardware. And these are just bottom boards. And I'll periodically cut bottom boards out of whatever scrap I've got around. This is my casting bench when everything's set up and in position while I've got everything I need right here. Um, I don't have a monitor in the, in the sunlight here. It's kind of hard to, to see what we've got going on here. Um, oh, I've got a little tray that fits up here. Holds some of my tools, parting dust normally. Got a rammer, a uh, tapered sprue cutter, and then a couple of little rakes I use in sand and just some brushes, um, pins for, for vents and runners and everybody's got their little spoon for, for cutting gates, um, riddle, and the, uh, well for match plates I've got match plate vibrators so I've got my air valve here, knee operated, and then the top just comes off and is out of the way. And what do we got inside? We've got, there's a pattern for, for pouring ingots, I just drop it into some sand and, and uh, ram it down. We've got bottom boards. Wow. 
Kowalowski. Actually fits those smaller boards. And we've got some ingot molds. And just some sand tools. And I just riddle my sand back in after I cast it back into the into the bin. Pouring tools here. Now I expect to either find dried out sand or frozen sand. Um, it's not real fun to work with either way. Especially after it's all winter. But look at it and see what we've got. Too bad. Yeah, it's a little dry. I tempered it right before winter. Yeah, we need to add a little water to it. But anyway, this is my setup. Except right there, I can put a bottom board on and then a flask and ram and mold them right here. The front of this is a piece of galvanized metal that I cut and fit to, to go over the front so I can pull the front off and, and dump everything right out the front. So I think for today, well, we'll probably probably drag out the tarp and shovel it out and see if we can't temper it a little bit more. So I'll get that set up and bring you back. Okay, well that still probably feels just a little bit dry. Um, we mixed a little bit of water in there and uh, what I'll do is I'm going to riddle it back into the sand bin. I'll probably have to do this one more time to get it tempered the way I, I think it should be to start casting with it, but I want to get a little bit of moisture in it and find out just how it was, just how the sand was now. You, I expected it to be dried out quite a bit more than it was. But, it's been cold enough over the winter and I did temper it right before I, the last time I used it when I put it back in the bin while I added a little water. So we'll move the camera over, we're just going to riddle all this right back into the sand. This is about, or into the bin, this is about two thirds of the sand that I had in the, had stored in the bin. So we'll get it riddled through and uh, let it set overnight and we'll check it again tomorrow and see how it, how it feels. And then hopefully we'll be ready to cast this weekend if the weather holds out.
I'm not really so much concerned with the sand being exactly the proper temper yet. All I want to do is mix the water that I put in with it back in with the back in with the sand and get it dispersed out, which is why I go ahead and take the time to riddle it out. I have built me a sand molar and uh, used it for two or three years. I ended up burning the motor out on it, and I'm not real happy with the molar design anyway. So I've been building patterns over the last year or so for a for a new molar. Um, I've got the gearbox pattern just about done and a few other patterns. So those are probably projects that I'll work in this year a little bit if I have time. As usual, if you haven't figured it out already, I have lots and lots of projects to do for a foundry furnace. Uh, I'll start off casting this year with a with a homemade furnace. Got uh, got a furnace that I've oh, I've been through probably three different furnaces over the years. Um, built them, used them, burned them out, and, and built another one. Um, the one I'll start off this year with is a little propane fired furnace that I built oh three or four or five years ago. Uh, it's getting a little bit tired, but it still does a good job. I'll uh, eventually relegate it just to, to taking scrap aluminum, melting it down into ingots. I have a McElvey furnace that was in a, a uh, I'm assuming, a high school foundry shop class. Supposedly it came out of a out of a school somewhere, and I did some trading for it about two years ago. I played with it a little bit. It, uh, I believe, was probably set up for natural gas to start with. convert that furnace over to propane. It, uh, it has sat long enough in a uh, different shop that I think it needs to be serviced. Uh, there are some uh, mud dauber nests and things like that were in it that will have to be cleaned up and I didn't, uh, when I was playing with it, didn't take the time to, to get all the safety functions working and I kind of decided on this nice little furnace that's in really good shape. I would like to have all those all those safety shutoffs working that type of thing so if I have time this year that'll probably be a project that I'll get to working on the, the lining and the body of the furnace itself are in really good shape um, you know you can see it's been used in a in a shop environment but it's uh, a nice clean little machine and the the lining is in excellent condition so it'll be worth taking the time and, and fixing up right several foundry projects that I want to have that I need to make some castings out of this year. I've uh, started, I've got the pattern all drawn, or the design all drawn up for a new larger steady rest for on the, the Sheldon lathe. So I need to start developing the pattern for that. But that's a relatively easy little little project. This part of that sand pile is a little bit wetter than the than the first part that I sifted back in. I see it clumping a little bit more, got a little more balling to it, and it just feels a little bit more wet. Okay, that'll be the rest of the sand right there. Yeah, that's probably 
That feels pretty good. And what I'll do is see, uh, I'll go ahead and cover this up, leave it set until at least tomorrow, tomorrow or Wednesday. And then we'll do the same thing again. It took me right at 20 minutes to sift all that sand through. And of course I would have been, with a molar I would have been done in a quarter of the time probably. But that's alright. just finish putting the rest of this stuff away and tomorrow we'll come out and start in again.